Hi, Paris. Let's talk a bit about binary in JavaScript, which is something that we usually don't talk about. And I guess you start thinking, like, why should I care about that? Four minutes is not enough, but while I was researching this, I found a really cool example by Dan Prince. And he was developing a game uh, in the matrix of uh, 512 by 512. And he was able to go from 16 megabytes to 4 megabytes um, because each pixel was represented by a tile. This tile was an object with several properties. And that would be around 479 bytes for tile. Now multiply that for each pixel, and you get a lot of megabytes. When he got into uh, binary operators in JavaScript, he was able to represent each tile by just a simple integer using one, one bit for vegetation, eight bits for uh, height, and the rest for type. First thing first, a few technicalities about JavaScript, uh, JavaScript numbers. Numbers in JavaScript are always full point. There's no integer, per se. Numbers that uh, get passed by binary operators get kept to 32 bits. And it's really cool to use binary operators on integers, but not so much for the other types, as you'll see. Uh, first things first, JavaScript has seven um, operators, binary operators. And we have the AND, first of all. Uh, this is a truth uh, matrix of it. So A and B equals A and B. If there's a 0, the result would be 0, basically. And uh, a few, uh, uh, simple trick that you can do with it, if you do number and number, it gets truncated. Basically, it gets converted to 32 bits, and the, the decimal part gets um, dumped outside. It's like, it's like basically like a truncate. You can do the same with and. Basically, if there's a 1, you, the result will be a 1. And if you do an or with 0, everything gets passed down except the decimal. It's exactly like truncate in um, ES6. What about negative numbers? They, get, they lose the decimal, and they get positive. Um, bitwise nor simply just switches the bits, even the, s the signal bit, the sign bit. So you can do cool things like this. And the bitwise sure, or like, as I like to call it, little hat. And if the bits are different, the result is always one. And, but anyone, this is my favorite, anyone knows what this does? Exactly. It's really weird. It's basically a variable swap without a third variable. So the first operation saves the difference between A and B on A. The second operation applies that difference on, on, B, and put, and on, on B and puts it on B. And the last applies the difference that's on A on B and puts it on A. And now you swapped integers. Just uh, now the three shifts that we have, we have shifting bits to the left, dropping the ones that got carried out outside and putting zeros on the right, which basically we can double numbers just by shifting one bit. Uh, we have the right shift, which is signal propagating. What does that mean is that if you have a positive number, which is the, zero, the, the sign bit is zero, you get pushed zeros. If you have a negative number, you're basically pushing ones. So the sign is preserved. You can do kind of a half, but not exactly a half, because it's floor even with negative numbers. So it's like a half-ish that you can implement for this. And finally, we have the last shift, which is zero fill. It's like the previous one, but it doesn't matter this, the, the sign. You're just pushing zeros from, from the to the right. And you can do things like this. So it's like parse int without radix, but don't ever do this. And you might be wondering, like, should we use this in production? Probably not. The code is obfuscated, as you've seen. There's limitation in gotchas. And Douglas Crawford doesn't like it that much. <laughs> but what about side projects? What about high performance examples like the one I've shown? shown? Why not? It's, it's pretty cool and fun. And I think you should just get on board and make your code weird and awesome. <laughs> Thanks.